I love making the style choice to sing breathy on purpose. But if your singing is breathy and you don't want it to be, I have just a thing for you. Three, actually. Ready to learn it? My favorite tool for singing less breathy is supporting the sound. And if you've been in my world for any length of time, you know that I sing the praises of supporting the sound. There are four reasons that supporting the sound is completely essential. You can check those out just about anywhere in my world. But a quick highlight, it helps protect your voice. It helps make your air last longer. Gives you a natural boost of power without having to strain and it gives you a little bit more control over your voice. So supportive sound is just fantastic. But one of those main benefits includes the ability to take that air, that extra breathiness out of your sound. And that comes from that power piece that I talked about, as well as the having control of your sound. Whether you sing, whether you act, whether you speak, whether you teach, anything that you do with your voice, requires support. It's going to be essential to you in order to have a healthy, long-lasting voice in your career. A really quick rundown of how to support your sound. Supporting your sound just means engaging your core muscles and bringing them inward toward your spine while you're making sound. You want to make sure you relax those core belly muscles while you're taking a breath and that you engage them when you are making sound. And that is how you support your sound. Like I said, I have loads of training on the full experience of how to support your sound that I would recommend that you check out here on YouTube as well as TikTok. So when you are you are tense, you tighten those core abdominal muscles here when you make sound, and then you relax them to take a breath. I have a quick tutorial on TikTok that's in my pinned video section called I Bet You're Not Doing This. That's going to be the easiest place for you to go to learn how to support your sound. Another cool trick for making some of the excess air come out of your sound, particularly for classical singing, is focusing the sound. Now, I will tell you, this is something that I learned how to do in college, and it's a little uh, unorthodox. <laughs> There's not a very straightforward way to explain how to do it, so it can feel a little bit woo-woo in my mind. So there's your warning. <laughs> so focusing the sound requires a lot of visualization and imagery. And one of my favorite ways to explain it that I use still to this day, primarily because I teach online, is using that little camera dot, your little webcam dot as a focal point. And what you want to imagine that you're doing is sending your sound kind of from a point in between your eyebrows, imagining that that sound is just going into that tiny little point. Again, that sounds totally weird. <laughs> But if you can imagine that that sound, I used to have a, a professor in college who would say, I want you to imagine that you have fishing line attached to the inside edges of your eyebrows and it comes out and then it meets in the middle. And uh, so I would imagine that it was going to like some little point on the wall. And what she would do is that she would ask me, this is, like I said, this is woo. She would ask me, what color is your sound? And I just would have to play along. But what that does, when you're asking yourself to describe in that level of detail, it makes it more specific. And your sound, I'm telling you, your sound has the opportunity to get much clearer. And really what's happening is you're just focusing that sound to be way more in your sinus cavities, just much clearer, much stronger. And that strength in your tone helps to eliminate the air. So like I said, the best way to do it is, <laughs> it's a little weird, but if you imagine that sound is traveling to a little point, which I like to use the little webcam dot on my laptop as a little place, a little example of a place to send that sound. Imagine that all the sound in your body is traveling on a teeny little, laser beam focus towards that little point. Um, and if it helps you to think about what color it is, that helps make it more real to your brain, to your body, to understand what you're doing. So that was sort of the classical version of how to eliminate extra air in your sound. And let's talk about the contemporary version. So if classical requires a focusing of the sound, contemporary requires you to move the sound more forward. So contemporary singing is forward by nature. So it resonates here. Uh, because you're not lifting in the back, which makes all of the sound come out of your nose, just like when you speak. 
right? And the more you move that sound forward, the more forward you make your sound, the clearer it's going to be, the less breath, the less excess air is going to be in your sound. So the easiest way for you to move your sound forward is to scrunch your nose. Now you don't have to scrunch your nose in actual performance as long as you know that you know that you know that you can be there. So scrunching the nose allows you to really feel what it sounds like so that when you soften your nose, you can still be in that space without having that visual cue, but it helps your body to feel that sound placed more forward. Sometimes an increase in volume helps to eliminate some of that excess air in your sound as well. So sometimes all you need to do, if you've moved it forward and you're still hearing air, sometimes add just a little more volume and it will do the trick that you need. Try out these tips in your singing for singing less breathy. And if you'd like my feedback on them, feel free to head on over to TikTok where I have a live weekly masterclass where I coach three singers live every single Wednesday. You can find the link to sign up for that in the description below. Marmalade, I need you to be quiet, kitten. No, you need to be quiet. No more talking. <laughs>